Hello everyone, today we'll be going over our Deep Learning Foundations course and today we're working with the concept of neural networks. Now, to dive right in exactly what neural networks are, neural networks form the backbone of deep learning. They are a subset of machine learning where algorithms inspired by the human brain learn from large amounts of data. At their core, neural networks are a series of algorithms that strive to recognize underlying relationships in a set of data. So they recognize a set series of relationships in data. Through a process that mimics the way the human brain operates. Uh, this is why neural networks have found immense application in fields ranging from speech recognition and image processing to drug discovery and autonomous vehicles. So speech, image, drug discovery, and autonomous vehicles. Uh, a basic neural network consists of three primary layers. So there are three layers to a neural network. They consist of the input layer. One or more hidden layers. through which the process, um, the data goes through a series of weighted conditions. The data is processed through weighted conditions. To form connections. And finally, the output layer. Which produces the final decision. It's going to use a different color. So it produces the final decision. It could be an a percentage of accuracy or maybe a final output that one is looking for in a neural network but that is just the three components that comprise of the neural network and each layer is made up of units called neurons each layer is made up of neurons which go through activation functions to help the network learn complex patterns. Help the network learn complex patterns via activation functions. Uh, the learning process of a neural network involves adjusting the weights and biases of neurons based on the error of the output compared to the expected result. So, so the learning process in determining how a neural network learns involves adjusting the weights
and biases of neurons based on the error output compared to the expected result. Higher out, so lower error, higher output result. So this adjustment is done through a process called backpropagation. Uh, which uses algorithms such as gradient descent to minimize the error by making small iterative adjustments. Gradient descent to make small iterative adjustments for the network to learn. And overall, the network's ability to adjust and learn from the data makes it incredibly powerful for predictive modeling and understanding complex relationships with data. So it's great for understanding complex relationships with data. With data. So overall, neural networks in general, let me just clean this up for you folks. So overall, neural, uh, neural networks in general require a significant amount of data, though, to learn efficiently and effectively and can make computational um, intensive decisions. But their flexibility and efficiency is learning complex patterns, uh, which have been made crucial to be able to advance the tool and use case of artificial intelligence. So going over what we have already done. So we already know that a neural network is really just a series of algorithms which recognize a set of series of relationships and data and the applications range from speech, image, drug discovery, and autonomous vehicles, just to name a few. And a neural network is comprised of three different layers. We have the input layer where the data goes in. We have one more hidden layers, which is where the data is being processed and uh, through a series of weighted conditions to form connections of the data. We have our output layer, which produces the final uh, decision. And each layer is made up of neurons, which help uh, the network learn uh, complex patterns via activation functions. And the learning process as the data is going through the neural network is that it involves yeah, let me just clean that up. Uh, adjusting the weights and biases of neurons based on the error uh, output compared to the expected result. And this whole learning process is called backpropagation. So backpropagation is the learning process through which every single step within the, th within the layers of the neural network is actually being uh, computed to be able to recognize those patterns within the data. And a good use case of backpropagation is using gradient descent to be able to make small iterative adjustments uh, for the network to learn and form stronger connections. Form stronger connections of the data. And overall, neural networks are great for understanding complex relationships with data. And we can think of many, many different iterative uh, examples and processes that could be applied within neural networks. And now let's head over to our concept example. Let me just clean this part up really quick. There we go. That's probably better. Yeah. Make it red. Yeah, there we go. And uh, feel free to take a screenshot. Uh, Prior to us moving over to our concept example. 
And now let's go over a concept example. So let's consider a real life example of a neural network applied in facial recognition technology. Uh, this technology is widely used in various security systems, smartphones, and social media platforms for tagging friends and photos, and even animal recognition at the same time. Um, and at the heart of facial recognition is a neural network that has been trained to identify and differentiate faces based on thousands of images. So a neural network. is trained on thousands of, I'm going to just put this in red just to give an example, images as an example, you can apply this to almost anything, and thousands, I mean, it really depends on your application for the most part, depending on how intense it is. But in the realm of deep learning and supervised learning, the conventional approach is typically more data, more GPUs to be able to actually have a higher means of accuracy. But that's just something on the side to put in some extra information. But the point is, in this example for facial recognition, uh, the neural network has been trained on thousands of images. So we're just getting the basics uh, through. So initially, and we all know for a fact that a neural network always has three parts to it. It always has the input layer, one or more hidden layers, and finally the output layer. And we all know that the input layer is where the data goes, One more hidden layers is where the training happens to recognize patterns in data. And finally, the output layer is the result after training. So initially, the input layer receives an image as an array of pixels. Uh, this hidden layer then uh, processes these pixels to identify patterns, shapes, and features such as eyes, noses, and lips, and each layer captures increasingly complex details from single edges at the lower layers to high-level features like facial structures in the deeper layers, altogether in the faces. And then this process is made through the network's weighted connections because we always know that between this whole learning process and every single component of the neural network is comprised of neurons and goes through a learning process via activation functions And the weighted connections are adjusted uh, during the training phase uh, using a vast collection of labeled images. And finally, the output layer then produces a vector of values that uniquely identifies the face in the image. So after the result of the training, we're going to get a vector of values.
that uniquely identifies to the face in the image. Values in the face of the image. And then overall, um, after the neural network has been trained, it will be uh, comparing the results uh, to a database of known faces to find a match. Then the neural network would compare results of the images to a database of known faces uh, to find a match. The success of a facial recognition uh, technology hinges on the neural network's ability to learn and generalize from the training data. So really the hidden layers are the most crucial part when actually understanding more in how the neural network operates in terms of the training phase, allowing it to accurately identify faces in a wide range of conditions, including different lightings, angles, and facial expressions. So overall, let me just clean this up. So. So in the facial recognition technology, we know that the neural network is trained on thousands of images to be able to have the result. We know that there are three layers to a neural network, input, uh, input, one or more hidden layers, and then finally the output. Output gives us the, gives us a vector of values that uniquely identifies values um, in the face of an image, which is the subject of what we are looking for. And then the neural network would compare results to an image, uh, to images, um, in a database, not two. And we also know and remember that the learning phase is uh, made by neurons and it's a continuous improvement via activation functions as well. And we also know that the output is also calculated and trained with backpropagation. and typically adjusting with gradient descent. And so let's move over to our first practice problem. And so for our first practice problem, let's imagine that we are developing a neural network to predict stock prices. So we are developing a neural network to predict stock prices. We already know that the neural network has three layers, input, hidden layer, one or more hidden layers. And finally, our output. You already know the training process happens via activation functions in the hidden layers. And then the vectors that are outputted to be able to calculate our um, definite output is done via backpropagation. where typically we use gradient descent. And now, to be able to develop uh, the whole neural network, we have to first investigate the data system behind this network. It must process historical prices, company performance. So we need to figure out historical prices.
company performance. I'm going to put in indicators as well and market sentiment analysis. To predict future stock prices. A uh, neural network could uh, efficiently capture the complex nonlinear relationship between these variables since you have loads of people already trading at the same time simultaneously and this can play, and this can play to many uh, markets as well. So for us to be able to go over, I actually have an example that will be over here. So to be able to analyze and go through each of the processes this is a neural network that was already done in Python. It's pretty simple since it's already calling upon numerous libraries that are already well established in TensorFlow and uh, scikit-learn as well, and importing different uh, libraries at the same time. So to go over the steps or what we're required to do is that the first thing we need to do is data processing or pre-processing. where before feeding uh, the data into the network, it's crucial to pre-process data, and this includes normalizing the data to the specific scale, so we gotta normalize the data to a specific scale. Uh, filling in missing values and possibly transforming categorical data into, nu into numerical format, so the data needs to be in numerical format uh, for stock prices in this case in stock price prediction this might mean scaling the price data so that all values are between 0 and 1 so values are between 0 and 1 making it easier for the neural network to uh, process so binary classification that can work this step ensures that the network isn't biased towards variables with large magnitudes and can learn more efficiently uh, from the data step 2 is the network architecture Design. I don't know why I did that, let me just fix that. So with the network architecture design, we need to design on the network architecture which is evolving from number of hidden layers and neurons in each layer. So the architecture. Is defined. From hidden layers. Maybe choosing the number of hidden layers and neurons in each layer. A more complex problem might require a deeper network with more layers. For stock prediction, a network might start with two hidden layers. So we have for stock prices in this example. The first layer might focus on short-term trends and indicators.
of the second layer. Could focus on long term. On long term trends. Uh, the architecture decision is crucial because it affects the network's ability to learn and generalize from data without becoming too complex or overfitting to the uh, training set. And then for the next part, for step three, it involves training the network. Let me just fix this. is training the network. Whenever we train the network uh, with the architecture set, the training involves feeding the pre-processed data into the network and adjusting the weights and biases using backpropagation and gradient descent. So when training, our output, we will Pre-process the data. With activation functions. Back propagation. And gradient descent. When we have done so, what we will be doing is that for stock price prediction, the network would learn to weigh various factors like historical prices and company performance to minimize the difference between its predictions and the actual stock prices. Uh, this step is iterative and may require multiple passes through the data called epochs. Pre-processing called epochs. To ensure the model accurately predicts the underlying patterns. Then step four, what we would be doing next. is evaluation and adjustment. Uh, after training, the model's performance is evaluated using a separate validation set. So we use validation set to predict stock price patterns And so this ultimately helps us to gauge how well the model generalizes to new unseen data. Uh, for a stock prediction model, this could mean testing its predictions against recent stock prices not included in the training set. Based on the evaluation, uh, adjustments might be made to the model's architecture or training uh, process to improve accuracy. And finally, the magic happens when we start deploying this bad boy. Deploy, deploy, deploy. Go, go, go. Deploy, deploy, deploy. This is where the magic happens and where loads of investors really want 
They don't care about the steps, so you only care about deploying. Anyway, <laughs> that small joke. So anyway, uh, once the model is trained and validated, it can be deployed in real-time training applications. So, real-time magic. Here it will receive live data, process it through the trained neural network and output the stock price predictions. With continuous monitoring um, overall is necessary to ensure the model remains accurate over time and retaining, uh, retraining may be required as new data becomes available or market conditions change. So uh, update with data. And so let me just clean this up for you folks. And then also go further in depth here. So if we were to go over our following script at the same time. So we already know, so let's go over our steps. So with our following script that we already have, and let me just move this over here. So if we were to go over the following script we have over here, we are first calling upon different libraries to be able to call and pull and make various commands as well. So in the first step, we already see in this comment, we load and pre-process the data that we've already set in place. So we have a CSV file of stock prices, and then we also make features within the data to predict whether we have open, high, and low, and the following volumes, just as example features. And then we always have a close uh, aspect within the data that we have inside of our CSV file to predict um, following stock prices. Then the uh, network architecture design is that focusing on uh, the min-max scaler, which is actually from the scikit-learn pre-processing uh, component over here, to get the features that we have uh, and be able to convert them numerically. And then we have the scale features as well to be able to fit and transform the features within uh, our pre-processing step. And finally, fit and transform and reshape the following data and min-max uh, min scaler to be able to output or following predictions. We then split the data into training and testing. And typically in training and testing, uh, the majority of the data that you're gonna have needs to be trained. So in this case, what they do is gonna be an 80-20 split. Oh, one second. Just erase that. Split. Hence, they have 0 0.8 over here based on the features that they have for the training sites, and they have the train features as well, and the test features, which are another way to be able to scale the features in size, and the target training as well, to train and then test the target with our scale features that we have, and then we are going to define our neural network architecture that we have for the model, and it looks like we have a sequential, um, sequential model that we have that uses long short-term memory and returns the following sequences and then shapes the features as well. Within the number of epochs, it looks like it's going to be 50 along with one dense layer. And then we compile the model and then have a learning rate already set. Finally, we have a loss function as well with mean squared. And then we reshape the features for the uh, long short-term memory layer uh, since each uh, neural network is going to have at least one or more hidden layers that we have we need to shape our features so that way the neural network can actually train the features that we have. And this is the part where we're focusing on training the model and then ultimately moving over to training the model to then make the predictions. And we need to make sure that we don't forget to inverse the scaling and interpret the results for our following output that we have. And then we can also use matplotlib in Python to be able to output our following results and have our outputs accordingly but we don't have a validation uh, 
set in place. So that means we would have to get new data to be able to make our further prediction. And so let's move out a little bit more. Let me just clean this up even more. And so, yes, this was our first practice problem. Let's head over to our next practice problem to be able to actually go further in depth as well. And now let's go over our second practice problem. So in the second practice problem, let's apply a neural network to a different scenario, predicting the energy consumption of a building based on historical usage data. So we are doing a, we are building a neural network. Predicting the building energy consumption. And as we know, a neural network typically has three groups of layers. We have the input layer, we have one or more hidden layers, which is where the training happens. Then we have the output layer. which gives us our output, the training happening inside of the layers, conducted by activation functions. And then the output layer is always calculated with back propagation. which is always typically calculated with gradient descent. And we would have a mean loss function. Have a loss function. Just clean this part up. There we go. Where the loss function serves as a purpose to compare the accuracy. Of training. And so now that we have already, one second, let's zoom out of here. Hmm. Let's fix this up.
Okay, there we go. And so the steps that we need to do to be able to actually build out our neural network are going to be the following. So one, we always focus on pre-processing the data. Where the first step still remains the same as a previous practice problem. And, but in the context for energy consumption prediction, this involves normalizing the historical data. So normalize historical data. And uh, weather conditions as well. To ensure the network receives this information in a format it can efficiently process. So that means everything needs to be uh, numerically formatted. And this, steps, uh, this step helps the model accurately capture the influence of external factors like temperature and humidity on energy usage, uh, since we have already ensured that the network receives this information in, in a format it can efficiently process. And the second step that we have is the network architecture. This is the part where we ask ourselves how many layers are uh, would we use in this case uh, to be able to train and how many epochs would be uh, laid out in order for the training to actually be commenced. So the complexity of this problem dictates the architecture. So revolves around the complexity for the architecture. Uh, for energy protection, a similar two-layer design could be used. So in this case, we're doing a binary classification. So. You can do two layers with the first layer focusing on the immediate factors classification we have two layers so the first layer I don't know why it does that so you have two So the first layer would be focused on the immediate. Uh, factors such as weather conditions. Well, the second step, or the second layer We'll be focusing on the complex long-term trends like seasonal changes, so long-term. Something that has to be predictable.
And the design must be uh, balanced with depth, referring to the number of layers, and breadth, number of neurons. So, depth refers to number of layers. Breadth, number of neurons. And in order to capture the uh, nuanced relationship between weather conditions and energy without uh, overfitting, we're trying to mitigate overfitting. So mitigate overfitting data, which would give us inaccurate predictions if we were to not properly assess. So and then the third step that we would have to do is going to be Focusing on training the network. And while training the neural network, uh, the steps involve adjusting the model to minimize the error between its predictions and actual energy usage. Uh, we do this with activation functions and backpropagation with activation functions and backpropagation. Typically that will involve gradient descents in just that case. Um, this might involve um, allowing the model to be able to learn how different factors contribute to energy usage and refine its predictions over successive training epochs. So there will be successive adjustments throughout each epochs. And this iterative uh, process allows the network to uncover the intricate patterns linking weather conditions and historical usage to future trends. So we have, uh, we are looking in the present weather conditions. From historical data. Create future predictions. Let's be able to outline and illustrate. Then the next part that we need for step four is going to be evaluation and assessment. And so throughout the step, we just evaluate the model's performance against an unseen uh, data to ensure it's generalized well to new situations. So we have a validation data set. And it could be just completely something that can be from da database, can be from anywhere. But the point is, is that it's untrained slash not part of the trained data. Generalized for new situations. New situations. 
For energy consumption prediction, uh, this might involve using data from a different time period or a different building to test the model's accuracy. So if I were to put an example, in this case, uh, energy consumption from a different time period. or different building. And our width, different energy consumption. And finally, we all know step five, when it comes to machine learning or deep learning models that are also made, the investors love this. It's deploy, deploy, deploy. Final step is to integrate the train model into a building management system. So that would just be, depending on what context you want to put it, you can put it in cloud for other, um, for other model platforms. But in this case, uh, we're just gonna put it in a building management system. And it always depends on the context of your application. And where the following model is uh, built and designed to predict energy needs in real time, continuous monitoring and periodic retraining with new data as usual. So train, train with new updated data. Slash updated data. Continuously and monitored. With per because we always want to maintain accuracy over time. Yeah. And so let's just go over. Let me just move out here. Going over our following script. So after we import the following uh, necessary libraries, we then begin uh, pre-processing the data in the following format. So we have our CSV file, and then we also um, select features which are uh, considered relevant for predicting uh, energy consumption as well. We have temperature, humidity, and time of the year. And then we have tar the target variable, which is what we want to predict, in this case, which is gonna be energy consumption. And then what we do is that we initialize the min max scale uh, scalar uh, to scale features uh, slash targets on the range between zero and one, since we're doing a binary classification. And then we compute uh, the min and max uh, values for scaling features and store them uh, in the following parameter as well. And we compute the min and max values for scale, uh, scaling the target and store the parameters as well. And we do an 80-20 split for when we are about to train the following model, hence the 0 0.8 over here. And we ultimately determine that the uh, parameters are able to derive uh, from the training set to prevent uh, information that is being um, leaked from the test set. So we already set this up between the training amount size and the features we're trying to extract and the actual value that we want. And so what we will be doing is that this is where the neural network architecture is. And what we're doing is that we are actually um, using a dense, um, uh, we're using a sequential model with uh, three different dense layers, namely with 64 neurons each. And then uh, each input layer, for instance, in this one, uh, will have 64 neurons and redo activation to shape the matches for the number of features. 
Then we have the hidden layer with 64 neurons and relu activation for nonlinear feature extraction, which we already have for following features up here that we defined. And then we would output, um, have the output layer with the single neuron um, for regression out output. And then what we do afterwards is then we compile the model all together, but we're actually using a tool called the Atom Optimizer uh, to be able to uh, compile the model within the three different layers that we have and then uh, present a loss, fun uh, loss function for the mean squared error. Then finally, after we've already built the architecture for our, our neural net, we'll then train the model on the training data and based on 100 epochs with a batch size of 32 uh, for the entire uh, data set and then we split uh, the following data set for validation as well. We then make uh, predictions on the test set and invert the scaling on the prediction to transform back to the original scale and then finally get our output for energy consumption. And so, yes, this was our first lecture for our Foundations in Deep Learning series, uh, focusing on neural networks. Thank you again for taking time to watch this. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions as well about uh, what we just went over, uh, feel free to put it in the comment section. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.